All right, so the first thing that we're gonna work on is retrieving all of our posts from our post table. And so what we're gonna do is we'll go to our specific path operation for that, which is the app.get slash post right here. And let's figure out how to do this. So all right, if we go back to up to our connection, right, you'll see that we have access to this object right here, which is cursor. So we're gonna use that to actually make a query. So we'll say cursor dot execute. And then this is where we go are going to pa paste in our SQL statements. So I'm just gonna put in three quotes right here and then we just put in our SQL statement. Uh, so in this case, right, to retrieve all posts, we just do select star from posts. Okay, and let's save this as a variable. So I'll just say these are my posts. And then let's just do a print post to see what we get. And so I'm just gonna go to my uh, postman and we'll just find my get posts request. We'll send it, all right, and let's see what happens, right? We could see that it printed out none. So this doesn't actually do anything, right? This is just passing in our SQL statement. However, to actually run it, we have to do uh, cursor dot, and then we have a couple of options. We can do fetch all, fetch many, fetch one. So uh, when it comes to retrieving multiple posts, we're gonna always use fetch all. Don't worry about fetch many. I don't think we're ever gonna use that. Uh, and then if we ever wanna find one individual post, uh, you know, like uh, finding a post by an ID or something, then we can use fetch one. Because I believe if you uh, want to fetch a post by an ID and you do fetch all, it'll technically get it, but it'll just keep searching through uh, the database for another post with that ID. However, we know that only one post can have that exact ID. So it's inefficient to kind of search through the entire database when we know there's only ever going to be one result. So for those, it's always better to use fetch one. But since we're retrieving multiple posts, we're going to use fetch all. And at this point, you know, we don't actually need to save this in a variable because it's never going to return anything we can save the output of this to be um, posts. So now if we save this, run this again, and I realized I forgot to actually <laughs> call it. Let's try that again. Right, you can see that we got all of our posts from here. And so now, instead of returning my post, which is our old array, which uh, we're not going to use, we're gonna return what we just fetched. So we're gonna return posts. And we'll go rid of that print statement. It's not needed anymore. And hopefully this works. So let's hit send. All right, and so now you can see we've got our two posts from our database. And it's got uh, all the extra fields. So it's got the published, which is the default value. And then it's got the created at timestamp, which Postgres added. So now we've actually successfully been able to retrieve posts from our Postgres database. And you can see how easy it is to actually work with that. In fact, it was actually a little bit easier to do this than to actually work with a uh, just an array stored in memory. It really just comes down to understanding SQL. And since we spent you know the last half an hour or so really drilling into how SQL works, uh, you'll see that SQL is pretty easy. And then once you know SQL, you know fetching, you know retrieving, updating, deleting posts from a SQL database, even within your Python code, is dead simple.